What is author marketing mastery through optimization, you ask? I'm going to tell you. It's the best way for us authors to make a living selling our books. Are you tired of hearing gurus tell you your book is only good enough to be a lead magnet for services? Are you tired of feeling like you have to be a slave to social media and then frustrated when that time doesn't actually help you sell books? I was too, until I found Ammo. Ammo is the only program that reliably produces results and it works for anyone. Is it hard work? You bet. Do you have to overcome some of your own prejudices to make Ammo work for you? Absolutely. But rather than being another program that rah rah shish goom boz tries to get you emotionally excited only to offer unclear methods, Ammo shows you how to design profitable ads step by step through a unique, never before tested formula. The founder, Steve Piper, is a data loving, formula driven author who escaped the kingdom of Amazon to build a platform for himself where he sold directly to his readers and built a loyal following. With Ammo, you know who's reading your books, how to contact them, and what they want to read next. If you've always been frustrated with Amazon's wall of mystery, of not knowing who's reading your books, of losing 50 to 70% of the hard earned money you make through book sales, Ammo solves all of those problems by putting you in the driver's seat and showing you how to fulfill your books directly to your readerships. Click the link in the show notes to learn more. I have several exceptionally fun podcast episodes coming out in the upcoming weeks. You're going to love them. But I just finished a conversation with Brian and Alan Manning. And you know those times when you feel like you've really locked into something and the conversation just rolls? I feel like that just happened. So I'm really excited to share that with you. It's a few weeks, so don't get too excited but I am looking forward to sharing that episode with you. Today, we are talking about one of the most important elements of book marketing that you are ever going to experience. You might not know how important it is until you've experienced utter and complete failure because of it. But listen closely, because today we're going to talk about how your unconscious self-sabotage will stop you from selling books. That's right, you are unconsciously sabotaging your own success. And I'm going to prove it to you, and I'm going to show you how to stop doing it. So stay tuned. This is TRBM, a podcast for authors who are serious about earning a full-time living selling books to readers. I'm the host, Jody J. Sperling, and each episode, I'll share with you practical tips on marketing and selling your books. And I won't hold anything back. Sometimes I fail. Every time I do, you'll know it. Sometimes I succeed. And when I do, I'll give you my step-by-step replay so you can succeed too. Thanks for listening. This weekend, I attended a book fair in Des Moines on the Iowa fairgrounds. And my good friend, Rich, sometimes roving co-host of this podcast. I need to have him on to be a co-host again soon because it's been a little while. You haven't experienced the greatness that is rich as a co-host. But he had uh, found this book fair and uh, some of us that are part of Hashtag Writers, which is currently Rich, myself, Juliet, and Heather O'Brien, are together trying to sell books through all means possible. So we were going to go to this book fair, but Rich had a family event, and unfortunately, Heather had a a family situation that kept her away. And so it was just me at a table, all by myself, me against the world, selling books. Let me tell you, it was one of those events that, for reasons unknown, did not attract a ton of interest. In fact, I sold a grand total of 12 books, and earned $120. Less the cost of printing the books, I made about $60, which covered my gas and a modest meal. It was absolutely worth every moment of it. I would go and do that event again next year, and 
I would have my eyes wide open because some of the best parts of the event came from the people that I meant and uh, meant met and had interactions with. You might be listening to the podcast for the first time because I met you and invited you to listen in for this episode of the podcast. And so I want to make sure I deliver the goods for everybody who's new listening to the podcast, as well as everybody who's been listening to the podcast and wants to sell more books. What did I learn? What can I pass on to you that will help you sell more books? Well, what I learned is really important, and I've been guilty of it myself at times, You have to, absolutely must believe in your books. One of my friends, she was the first person to greet me coming in the doors. I'd never been to the event before. I didn't know exactly how to set up. And because Rich had signed up, I wasn't getting the emails that I needed to in order to know what was going on. I didn't know uh, where my table was. And so I had to kind of ask around and I felt a little bit sheepish about it. But, uh, my friend, she was helpful. She kind of pointed me in the right direction. And eventually I was able to find my table, the table that was going to be mine for the day. And as we started talking and people were getting ready to set up, uh, you had that sense of, all right, people are going to flood through the doors at 10 a.m. and we're going to sell a ton of books together. It's going to be a just amazing experience. So I went before the doors opened and made sure that I talked to as many people as I could who looked like they were set up and ready to go. People who didn't seem to be stressed out about anything that they had to do. Because I I didn't want to add to anyone's stress or take away from their setup time. But if you were set up already and going, I talked with you and I got your email address if possible. I learned a little bit about what you were doing, told you about what I was doing, made that connection. Do that if you're an author going to an event. Make sure that you talk to as many authors as you can. Trade information. It may never come to anything, but it may end up being a connection that is worthwhile for the rest of your life. Just like Twitter. Uh, I would say just about four people in the... 24,000 followers that I have are lifelong, impactful, amazing friends. That seems like a pretty good percentage to me. We meet a lot of people in our life. But the same thing here. Meet people, get them, get them going with your podcast or your mailing list for your books, even if they don't buy, whatever. But make a good impression and be interested. I was and am interested in everybody I met at the book fair. And they were interested in me and wanted to know more about what I was doing. We're all writing together. We're on this journey. And your chance to succeed is greatly tied up in your ability to care about your fellow writers and to worry about what they're doing. But if you're too worried about selling, you might not realize that the other people there are your friends, your allies, your co-conspirators. So make sure that you are not self-involved, worried about just you and what's going to happen with you. That's my first piece of advice. You may be self-sabotaging yourself because you're so worried about your own book sales that you can't see others. Make sure to stop, see others, care about others, invest in others. It matters. It matters to them and it matters to you. So do it. Like I said, I sold 12 books. I made $120. Six of the 12 books were from vendors, people who had tables and were selling books. That's great. That's fantastic. It's wonderful. Those three people will most likely, yes, that's right, they each bought two books. I made six sales on the day. Calling all self-published authors. If you live in the United States and you've always wanted to see your books in bookstores, This may be the most important ad you'll hear in 2023. Listen carefully. No matter where you are in your publishing journey, it's not too early to position yourself to pursue brick and mortar bookstore distribution. But if you're a self-published author, you've probably heard, getting your books in stores is next to impossible. That's no longer the case. For just $5, you'll receive a lifetime membership to the self-published author co-op. When you join, you'll have access to a members-only community with a detailed roadmap on how to get your books ready for bookstore distribution. Joining our community does not guarantee bookstore distribution, as there's a limited availability each month to be a featured author. And that's why the cost of a lifetime membership 
is less than a cup of coffee. Whether you're just about to publish your first book or you're selling thousands of copies a month, if you don't have your books in bookstores, the Self-Published Author Co-op is the easiest, most efficient way to get national distribution of your books. Click the link in the show notes to join now. Those three people will possibly be readers of my books for the long haul because I'm a writer and I still read a ton. Three of the sales I made were from guests that walked through the doors and were interested in the kind of books that I was writing. I think on the day, about 20 people came through. And I will admit that I probably could have had more sales had I fully believed that my books were great. The problem is, is that there's a part of me that is afraid that the high level of adult language, the F-bombs and SH-bombs and um, adult themes like murder and, you know, other stuff could turn people off. And so I think there's a part of me that fears and maybe I didn't sell the way I could have if I would have believed that my books would leave people better off than when they came. But to contrast that, there was a gentleman just across the aisle from me. He may be listening to this podcast right now he had one of the most captivating book covers that I have seen in a long time. It just was perfectly made. It really spoke to the genre. It spoke to so much. I was really impressed. And I went and talked with him and we had some conversations and it quickly became evident that he'd been burned in life, a lot like me. He hadn't had the success that he expected uh, he'd written a great book, but it hadn't led him to the six-figure book deal with a major publisher that he expected. And so he had a bit of a protected posture against traditional publishing. And when he talked to me about his book, he said, it doesn't fit neatly into any genre and it's kind of weird. And, you know, I, we just didn't know how to sell it. And the more he talked about his book, the more I was like, maybe I won't buy it. And I didn't. It was the only book there this weekend that I thought, I probably am going to buy that book. But he actually talked himself out of the sale with me because I thought maybe, possibly, he wasn't committed enough. And maybe it won't be as good as I want it to be. And it was just that little bit of doubt that caused me to hang on to my wallet. I probably did that to several people who came by my table. My pitch is Magical Adventures with dark humor and a twist of magic. And that really roped a lot of people in. But then I followed up by saying, you know, if you're comfortable reading Stephen King, you'll be comfortable in my world, which is a crutch. Stephen King, you are a crutch for me. And I think it's true, but I think that people sensed in there that I wasn't fully bought into my books. And some people walked away not buying my books because of that. So I can get better. I can do better at this. But you know what's cool is that I believed in my books enough that I sold to six people and I walked out of the event this weekend having sold more books than anybody else there. So if I'm comparing and contrasting, I'm on the right road. And so I can talk to you a little bit about how it might work for you. And that is believe in your books. The more you believe, the more you will sell. And the more you sell, the better chance you have of creating super fans, people who are going to love your books for the long haul. And that's all you need. You don't need a million readers. You need a thousand readers who will always buy your next book. Because if you are committed to writing and you have a thousand people who will always buy your next book, you will never want for food. You will never want for clothing. You will never want for the good things in life. You might not be able to go to Machu Picchu. You might not be able to fly first class. But with a thousand people who love what you do, if you just keep doing you, it will be great. And if you hear the train in the background, yes, I'm in a small town, Oakland, Nebraska. The train is rolling through. I'm just a couple blocks away. It actually shakes my house when it goes past. It's amazing. I live in an old 1800s house. If you've been listening to the show for a long time, you already know this, but it's fantastic. I love this small town where I can write, where I can reflect on what makes books sell and where I can share that with you. Um, 
A couple other things that I would share with you about these events is believe you have something to offer. And the reason I say that is simply because if you do, then you'll want to capture anyone who walks through. You'll want to make sure that you have a way to connect with them and contact them and to start to build that relationship. So bring something with you where you can capture email addresses, names, and information about the people that you're going to meet. Get them signed up for the relevant email list and start to deliver value. I've been doing the Six Point Saturdays, and I'm going to continue to do that for the foreseeable future, where I just talk about six things that happen to me during the week. Uh, For anybody who signs up for the email list, is on the email list, they're going to get a little bit from me, and, and all six of those points are going to be you know, the music that I listen to, the movies I watch, the books, the podcasts, anything that experience showed me throughout the week, it's not going to be about me. It's going to be about the stuff that really moved me and changed me. And hopefully I can point toward great creators of all kinds in the email. But also, you can get to know the kind of person I am. And if you get to know the kind of person I am, you might feel like, hey, Jody's the kind of author who's going to write a book that I like, even if it's a little bit different than what I might expect or usually read. And so there is the fallback onto my work that will happen as a result. And I encourage you to understand that if your work is great, that it is great to lead people back to your work. I know this is a bit of a shorter episode for you this week, but I wanted to give you something that was hot off the presses right on the top of my mind and for you to know that if you've written a book and you believe in that book, go out with confidence. Don't second guess yourself. Pitch the book like it's the best thing that's ever been written. And if it isn't in your mind the best thing that's ever been written, do another round of edits. Nobody will fault you for taking a bit longer to make it everything you ever wanted. We'll talk to you again on Wednesday. Thank you for listening to TRBM. The theme music was provided by the ever-talented Christopher Talon. And hey, if you liked what you heard, share this show with other readers because what's the point of telling stories if nobody's listening?